Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn uh, SQL Server 2014 database best practices. And the things that we're going to discuss in this particular video are file path, initial size, auto growth, collation, recovery model, compatibility, level, and other options in a database. So here's my SQL Server um, right here. I'm connected with the Management Studio, and this is my database. We're going to go ahead and click on Properties, right click on the database and go to Properties. The first option you will see is a general option. It will give you just a quick overview of your database, that um, how much your database uh, is uh, the space and how much available space and what are the collision and all that kind of good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and click on Files. And up here, uh, what I was talking about, the file path, Ne uh, the first b good practice, best practice is never put your data file or log file um, on C drive. And the other uh, best practice is that um, keep the data file, which is MDF, and your log file of your database, which is LDF, on separate drives. So do not put them on same drive because sometimes what happen is the log file tend to uh, go out of whack and uh, it'll fill up your drive and once the drive is filled then uh, there won't be any room for data expansion and your database can go in suspect mode which is not good for production so that is the file path I wanted to quickly discuss the second option up here is initial size when you create a database there are um, you know uh, white paper from Microsoft that is covering the initial size best practices believe me uh, it is very important I would my my recommendation to you is that if you can if you can afford uh, put the initial size as much as um, is at least um, you need to assess the size of your database your transactions your application that's going to use that particular database how much are the transactions per second how much the transactions per day or in an hour or per minute whatever the criteria that you wanted to use at least make sure that your initial size for that particular in production server your particular database covers at least six or one year without actually going to go and grab more space since you have set your initial size uh, so low the reason we need to do that is uh, it covers also the auto growth so once the initial size of a database is met the next thing is a that uh, on, on any transaction on that particular database get halted. It stops before it gets the next segment on the page on the disk drive, next, ne next size of the uh, segment that you have defined in auto growth. Let's say that up here um, I'm saying that 1 MB. So next time is going to right now initial size is 4 MB. So once the 4 MB is filled it's going to halt all the operations and go ahead and grab 1 MB from here and that makes it like 5 MB which is 1 MB available space in that uh, in that particular database and then the, all the transactional transactions start taking place until we it meets 5 MB which means that okay so the 5 5 MB is met and now it is running out of space it needs to go and grab more space in this operation what happened is that your performance go way way down so that's why I always uh, recommend that go ahead and assess your database at least for six to um, a year uh, initial size that way your database doesn't have to grow in the beginning it might look a little weird that your data size basically is 20 MB and you're holding 10 gig uh, size of that particular database believe me it's okay because it, it's it's better to hold the size rather than put database into grabbing um, in, into a cycle that will grab more uh, uh, disk space uh, over the period if your database is too busy your performance is going to be very low and again up here this matters um, auto growth uh, there's nothing wrong with having auto growth on but up here if you click on that there are a couple options th that you get first enable auto growth some of the folks that will actually argue with you that auto growth uh, enabling auto growth is not a good idea as far as I'm concerned it's not 
really a bad idea as far as as long as you really take care that what the growth level should be and what the maximum size of that particular um, growth so up here it says the the percentage and the the megabytes the for me the best practice is never do the percentage do in uh, uh, megabytes because let's say that your uh, your database is 20 gig and next time you have put 10%, it is going to grab 10% uh, of that 20 uh, gig. And if you, it can't really do that, then it's going to give an error. So if you put uh, in megabytes, let's say that you wanted to grow the database and you have done the assessment and you wanted to do the file growth about like 5 gig or 2 gig each time it needs more space make sure that you keep in mind that you don't want your database to cycle through to grab more space in in multiple times a day because every time it does that it's gonna decrease your performance so i will go ahead and assess your uh, uh, uh auto growth uh, your uh, transactions if you don't know how to assess the transaction i'm going to put out a video that how to uh, measure your transaction for a week or maybe for a month and based on those assessment you can adjust your auto growth you can adjust your initial size of your database for your production server and also the maximum file size up here um, for data file I wouldn't go uh, with the limited um, to uh, any, any size because uh, sometimes what happen is maybe you're running a batch file at night and it reached to that space and now it's it's not going to uh, grab any more space because you have limited it to that particular uh, uh, size so it's not gonna um, uh, run any transaction in every batch file or any other uh, things that's uh, using that database is going to fail so I would keep it unlimited however I'll keep monitoring monitoring that database on on regular basis so that is um, so we covered initial size and the path and a little bit about auto growth. So we're gonna go ahead and click on options right here. Option collation. Uh, collation is uh, important in a way that if you your uh, business is international, uh, different collision used in a different country. So if your database is going to be used for Japan, if your database is going to be used for UK, it might have a different collision. But keep in mind that uh, if uh, you uh, your database behavior is highly going to rely on collision. Right now it's case insensitive, uh, but if you have a case sensitive, which is CS, uh, and if you put that there, then anything that you um, set the properties or such as password or any, anything like that, if you uh, or table name, uh, if you uh, give the uh, lower case and uh, any case in that particular table name is upper, then it's going to give error that that particular object doesn't exist. So you need to make sure that you are really careful in selecting the collation. If you don't select the collision during your um, database creation, it is going to take the default, which is your um, SQL Server collision, which is uh, your model database collision right here, is going to take that. So, uh, but you have an option to change the, your database collision later on, right here, all the collision available in SQL Server 2014, so you can choose any that you want to. The next is uh, uh, recovery model. It really depends on your disaster recovery scenario. That uh, right now, if there, if you have a database that uh, really deletes, updates, and uh, um, you know bulk uh, insert, a lot of that happens. Uh, you might not want to put a, a full recovery. You might want to put a simple recovery. Otherwise, it'll fill up your uh, log. However, uh, you need to make sure that uh, um, you know the recovery of that data. If you can afford losing the data, uh, if you can't afford losing the data, then you need to have a full differential and uh, a log backup in order to do that. But if you keep the full recovery and you take the database backup once, once and uh, once a day or um, once a week. And for some reason, that database is ha that database has a lot of uh, read. Um, I'm sorry, um, bulk insert, uh, delete operation. Then it's going to fill the log of that particular database, and that you're going to run out of log space. 
The next up here is compatibility level. If there are application that is not compatible with SQL Server 2014, you still can use SQL Server 2014 database. However, you need to change your compatibility level up here. Let's say that you you're, uh, you wanted to put a database on SQL Server 2014, but uh, your application is only compatible with SQL Server 2008, you still have an option. You click on uh, this compatibility level and you select SQL Server uh, 2008 compatibility level and your application should work fine from there. Contain database, if you, a uh, containment of database, there's none and partial. Um, we will get in detail of uh, contained database when we create a contained database. I'll cover this option in detail. So up here, um, other options, auto close, if you, uh, these, these are options that's uh, basically, uh, if you are, um, uh, you have worked on SQL Server 2008, 2012 uh, then basically they are almost the same but uh, some of the options uh, that are important up here this says that auto shrink in production server you should never have this property true because you don't want auto shrink enable uh, auto update statistics uh, right now it has a true but uh, if you are really monitoring your stats and you want you don't want to do uh, the stat updates um, uh, during the daytime you need to make it false and uh, then do the update stats every night or whenever your schedule permits and whatever you are doing in your organization as far as your maintenance of the database you need to choose that and uh, what are what are other uh, important options right here um, default cursor Default cursor behavior right here is global. You can also choose local if you click up here. The scope of that, if you click on local, the scope of that cursor would be the local. So that would be local to the particular session that's running that particular cursor. So rest everything really um, doesn't stand out that um, we need to really too much uh, worry about that. Up here, um, if you wanted to, uh, sometimes we do use, if you wanted to do the maintenance on that particular database, you can use this uh, multi-user and single user uh, and restricted user if you are doing something, uh, any maintenance on that particular database and that you don't want any other user to connect to that database for that uh, time period, you can go ahead and basically make it single user or restrict restricted users so that no other user can connect to that database. Um, up here, uh, change tracking, uh, if you wanted to do the change tracking, it needs to be true. We'll be covering that in later videos. Uh, permissions, um, everything, uh, we will be covering uh, permission in uh, database access in SQL Server DBA access uh, uh, module. So uh, everything else really uh, is not scope of this particular video and we'll be covering in our next coming videos so stay tuned I hope it helps